Welcome back. We are going to rock the trapezoid dream on some tonight. So let's just start with a quick review of our trapezoid. So just go ahead and sketch a nice vertical trapezoid. All right, that's the way most of them are going to end up looking in this course. So let's make ours stand up vertical. So most people are familiar with the one half height base one plus base two. We're just going to tweak that a little bit because our heights are normally going to be our two parallel lines. All right. So we can easily reverse this formula and we're going to say area equals one half base height one plus height two. All right. And we'll probably stick with this one for the majority of the course. Like I said, most of our trapezoids are going to be standing up vertical and we just want to make sure that we're adding the parallel sides together. So I'm going to call them heights in this case. So this is very, very similar to yesterday. We are still approximating the area under a curve, but instead of using rectangles, and every time we say right, left, and midpoint, those are strictly rectangles, we're going to focus on just the trapezoid shape tonight. Whoops. So let's go ahead and we're just going to take that same function that we sketched yesterday. Uh, we'll say from 0 to 4 of that x squared plus 1. And we'll find a Riemann sum with four subintervals using a trapezoidal approximation. So again, go ahead and sketch that picture out. Leave enough room in there so you can draw in trapezoids. And I always think it's wise just to rewrite your formula down. You know, when we did the, the midpoint, the left and right, we always started with area equals base times height. So let's just get the formula on our paper. Area equals one half base height one plus height two. Now again in our case we're using equal bases and that's so convenient. So my first step is I'm going to go ahead and draw in the trapezoid and let's just practice doing that. The easiest way to draw the trapezoid in and we know we're going to fit four in here I'm going to squeeze one between zero and one, one and two, two and three, three and four is basically draw on the vertical lines first and you're going to start on your x-axis and go straight up until you hit the curve and make your point. So I'm going to go at 0 and I'm going to go 1 straight up till I hit the curve. Once I hit the curve on either end, connect them to make a trapezoid. So I'm going to go straight up on 2 here, make my point, connect those two to make a trapezoid. Same on 3 and same on 4. Okay, we want the ends to be on the trapezoid. All right, so now I'm just going to carefully plug all my information into my area formula. Now I can leave the one half out in front. So I, you know, I'm using that one half base height one plus height two for each separate rectangle. Um, but because they're all going to have the one half, I'm going to pull that out as a GCF. And since all my bases are equivalent, which is extremely nice, I'm going to pull that out as a GCF. And now basically, I'm going to evaluate height 1 plus height 2 of each rectangle. So in the first, I'm sorry, of each trapezoid. In the first trapezoid, my height 1 is sitting at 0, so that's f of 0, plus its second height is on 1, so plus f of 1. Okay, and let's kind of bracket those in separately. And then I'm going to add on to that the heights of the second trapezoid. Well, it's one side is sitting on 1 as well, and its other side is on 2. So I'm going to add on f of 1 plus f of 2. And then I'll add on to that. My third trapezoid is on 2 and 3. Oops, i got to scroll up a little here. I'm going to add on f of 2 plus f of 3. And my last trapezoid is using the heights of 3 and 4. So I'll finally add on f of 3 plus f of 4. And we'll close her off. So again, my 1 half base should be with every single one of these, but because it's the same, it's pulled out as the GCS. And then I think you'll see a neat little pattern. And again, this is only going to work when you have equivalent bases. I'm using, and you can notice the colors here, the f of 0 once. I have only one single orange here. And then I should be using the f of 1 twice. It's on the orange trapezoid and the blue. 
and I'm using f of 2 twice, which should be correct, it's on the blue and the purple. I'm using f of 3 twice, it's on the purple and the red, and I'm only using again f of 4 once. So let's go ahead and make that little observation in our notebook. You are, if the bases are equal, you're using the first and last bounds once and every other number twice. And again, that's a little trick that'll come in handy for those of you that catch on to it. If you don't, that's okay too. You could, you could always just write them all out. Um, but again, I'm using this line once and this line once, and then everybody else is getting used twice. So you'll notice one f of zero and one f of four, using those first and end points last once. And then I should have two f of ones, two f of twos, two f of threes. And again, from there, it's just plug and chug. So our goal is really just to focus on setup today. So let's go ahead and try another one. All right, let's go 0 to 2 of x squared plus 10, and we're going to use four equal subintervals. And again, that equal is very, very handy. Uh, so I am going to sketch this out before I jump through all of them. x squared plus 10 just shifts me up 10. And notice we're only going from 0 to 2. Oh, shoot, I don't know what I just did. Um, one, two, there we go. All right, and we said four equal intervals, so I'm going to say to myself, okay, I have zero to two as a distance of two. I need four intervals. That means I have a base of one half. So I want you to do a couple things. Um, I want you to go ahead and set up a left-hand ream on sum, a right-hand ream on sum, a midpoint ream on sum, and finally, the trapezoid ream on sum. And if you've got all those, we are in amazing shape. So take a minute, pause me, uh, try the three review from yesterday, and, and give that trapezoid a whirl and see if we're on the same page. I'll quickly talk through my, my left hand ream on sum. Um, so again, I always start with the formula air equals base times height. My base is one half for each rectangle. Because it's a left, I start with the lower bound. So I know I need f of zero. And I'm going to add every half, f of 0.5, f of 1, and f of 1.5, okay? Not using the last uh, upper bound. And notice I have four pieces, four subintervals, and I'm good to go. Right hand ream on sum. Again, I'm going to start with area equals base times height. I want to drill that in my head. I still have a base of 0.5. Heights this time, I'm not using the lower bound, I'm using the upper bound. So I'm not starting with a zero, I'm starting with the next mark, which is f of 0 0.5 plus my f of 1, 1.5, and 2. Okay, so that was that little trick we talked about yesterday. Right hand sum ends with the upper bound. All right, so let's go ahead and make two sketches in our notebook. And we'll put them right next to each other. And we'll draw one function that is concave up, concave up and decreasing. And then we'll draw one function that's concave down and decreasing. So go ahead and try to sketch something that's strictly concave up but decreasing. So I'm going to draw in, this is concave up and decreasing, this is concave down and decreasing. And they often will ask whether a left, a right, or trapezoid, and midpoint is an over or under approximation. 
So I think it's smartest, the bigger you draw the shape, the easier it is to see. If you try to draw a dinky little rectangle in underneath this curve, it's very difficult to tell. So I'm going to test a right hand Riemann sum. Now remember, when I say right hand, we're talking rectangle, and that means the right corner is on the curve. And again, don't draw a tiny little rectangle like this. It's too hard to tell. Oh, nuts, I lost my graphs. Oh boy. All right, I drew them back in. So the bigger you make it, the more obvious it will be to tell whether your function's an over or under approximation. So I'm basically gonna start on this end, go up till I touch the curve, and come over way until this end. And I think that it's extremely obvious that this is a huge, huge under approximation. Okay, now I think it was hard to tell with that little red rectangle. The bigger you make it, the more obvious it will be. Let's do the same thing in our concave downing decreasing. I'm gonna go up on the right till I hit the function. I'll just make it pretty darn big. I'm gonna come all the way over here and down. And again, you'll notice this is a huge under approximation. I have not accounted for this area. So the one thing I want you to take away from this, besides drawing large rectangles or large shapes here, is that the concavity doesn't seem to matter. Okay, our concavity didn't matter. It was strictly because our function was decreasing. All right, so this is one time where the concavity isn't a huge part. So let's make a little note there. It was an under approximation because our function was decreasing. And that's not something you need to memorize uh, as much just sketch it out. Don't you know overestimate that question. Just sketch it out and it should be pretty straightforward. Uh, let's go ahead and sketch two more functions next to each other again. And let's draw a concave um, up and increasing and concave down and increasing. So concave up and increasing, concave down and increasing. And again, let's just attack a right hand Riemann sum one more time. So again, come up on the right and make it large and over and down. And I think it's such an exaggeration of how big of an overestimate this is. And do the same on this guy. Hit the curve on the right, over and down. So again, the concavity didn't matter whether it was concave up or concave down. It was the point that the function was increasing is that it's telling us it's the over approximation. So I can't stress enough. The questions aren't too difficult here. Just draw them out. All right, let's try one more. Let's go ahead and sketch. We've got concave down and decreasing. We've got concave up and decreasing. Um, and this time, let's go ahead and sketch a trapezoid in there. Now remember, you know, the right rectangle we went up on the right, left rectangle we went up on the left. Trapezoid, come up on both ends until you hit, and then connect. And we'll connect this one. And again, the bigger you make the trapezoid, the more obvious it's going to be that this is the under and this is the over. Now, the trapezoid is the one case where notice the decreasing part did not matter. This time, the concavity mattered. Okay, so unlike the rectangles, the trapezoid's a little different. This one does rely on the concavity, whereas the rectangles strictly relied on the increasing and decreasing. But again, if you just sketch it out, I think it'll be pretty obvious. Well, there's our lesson on Riemann sums and trapezoids, and uh, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a great night.